let me lay down some uh, color right to begin. Now this, I didn't take time to clean out this airbrush perfectly, so we're going to get a little bit of impurity, but that's all right for demonstration purposes. And again, I'm using a, a regular traditional brush to mix it in the cup. And by the way, I'm using an Iwata Micron. This is a CMC XF airbrush. It's my favorite one. There's my little bit of impurity. So let's say I'm doing some kind of background is this nice sky blue color. This was phthalo blue with a little bit of badger white in it. Okay. Now let's say I want to, if this is a sky for instance, and I want the top to be just a little bit darker. Now I can just grab my transparent blue and go over that and get a real nice gradation. But if I accidentally go too far, then I will have a little bit of a, a problem on my hands. So let me show you how the, the color stop technique keeps you from going too far. Are you with me? This is a safety net, if you will, that you can use. And I do have to clean out my airbrush pretty well right now. So I'm using my bonafide Kleenex vapor trap, overspray trap. And uh, let's say I want a very particular blue, but I, I don't want to go too dark. I'm, I'm uh, worried, I'm afraid. Like This would be especially an issue if I were doing a portrait, if I were doing flesh tones. It wouldn't be blue, of course. It would be some kind of flesh tone, but I, I don't want to go too far. So here's what I do. I'm going to mix up ahead of time a color blue that I think is going to be right. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to make sure my airbrush is good and clean. I'm just spraying water out of it now. And I'm going to literally count drops. One, two, three, four. Four drops of phthalo blue and one, two drops of badger white. And I'm going to mix that. Now that's not very many drops, is it? That was four drops of phthalo blue, two drops of badger white. And I have here already cut out a number of little pieces of note card. And I'm going to find a safe place, a, a background that doesn't matter if I get paint on it. And I'm going to paint just the end of this piece of note card good and opaque. Get it? Now do you remember what the recipe was? Four to two, right? Now let me hold that here and say, ah, no, I'm not even close. That's actually lighter than what I had. But are you with me? Let me try it again. So I need to clean out my airbrush now very quickly. I have a little bucket of water over here that I'm dumping some of this into. And I have, again, my mist trap here. Now, anytime when this gets too full of liquid, you take more Kleenex and stuff it in there. And I've had one of these last me for months and months, just using it over and over and over again. Okay? So now I know that four drops of blue and two drops of white was not dark enough. So I'm going to change my recipe. One, two, three, four, five, six, I'm going to go for seven, seven drops of blue and stay with two drops of white. One, two. Now I mix that up. Again, just a traditional brush is, I think, the best tool because the hairs get right down there in the bottom of the cup and mix it all up very well. So now this recipe is seven to two. I'm going to take the other end of my card here. And paint it good and opaque. Now let's see how that looks. That's not too bad. It's a little bit slightly darker 
but I think I've done enough. Now let me just demonstrate or, or model one more thing for you before I leave this. Don't throw this out. What you do now here is record the recipe. This was four P H T H A L O four Thalo blues and two white. And on this end, it's seven thalos and two white. Got it? After months and months and months or years and years and years, you'll end up with what I've got here, your own recipe cards. Everyone is recorded. This one right here is two Windsor blue, uh, two processed cyan, and one badger white. In fact, that looks like pretty much the color I'm looking for. But you see that if it's an opaque color, then it can't get any darker than that right there. Does that make sense? So I, what I call the color stop method is a really safe way of not letting something go too far. And that becomes very important when you're doing flesh tones because you might, you might have the flesh just right, but you need just a hint of, of rose red on the cheek or on the nose. But it's, if you do a transparent color, it's so easy to go just a little bit past the line and then you, you got to back up and kind of start all over, if you will, getting that, that flesh tone. I hope that makes sense to you. When we come back, we're going to start really talking about basic skills and some practice exercises that you can do to begin honing your skills with the airbrush. <music>